In this video, we're going to see how we can ensure the responsiveness of our Java E applications by applying the bulkhead pattern and back pressure. So the bulkhead pattern is quite similar to the idea of ships, how ships are constructed in different partitions or compartments. And if one of that compartment gets destroyed or gets damaged, then hopefully the overall ship doesn't sink because of it, because there are still many other compartments that are safe and that are isolated and still intact. So that's somewhat the idea. And that's quite similar if we apply this to enterprise applications. That means our enterprise applications have, for example, multiple pools, such as connection pools or threat pools. And then if we have um, distinct pools for, for example, distinct functionality, then if one of that functionality is under heavy load or in other um, terms not able to handle more traffic, then at least the rest of the application stays intact. So that is somewhat the idea. And in enterprise applications, that means, let's say, we want to apply multiple thread pools. So for Java E applications, we must not start our own threads and therefore only not um, create our own thread pools. However, there are Java E uh, mechanisms to still do so, to create somewhat managed thread pools. And a very helpful library to do that is the Porcupine library by Adam Bean, by Airhacks, that allows us to inject our own um, specific um, executor services. Quite similar to a managed executor service, however, we can define multiple of those. And this instrument craft shop example application, well, has, for example, a JAXRS resource. And now what I want to show you is how we, well, first of all, want to define um, asynchronous JAXRS resources to then further on, well, use dedicated thread pools that are created by this Porcupine library. And the reason for that is, is that the way how our servlet container or application um, container works is that we usually have a single um, thread pool for all of the request threads. And all of the request threads that come in, well, then um, handle and execute a specific functionality but that somewhat contradicts the idea of having multiple of thread pools. So ultimately, what we want to do, achieve is to have an asynchronous JAXRS resource that basically passes over from the request thread to an own managed or own defined um, thread uh, from that specific thread pool and then handles that logic. And only after um, the handling is successful, then the, um, the connection or the um, request thread will resume. The way how that is implemented, there are actually multiple ways in JAXRS. And since Java E8, we can use return types such as completion stage to basically tell the JAXRS runtime that this will be an asynchronous re um, JAXRS resource. So in our case, that means we have to somewhat return a completion stage. For example, we, um, return a completable future by supplying this asynchronously, this get instruments that gives us the list of um, musical instruments here, for example, and then they will be well created like that. This, however, is not enough yet because what it does, it uses the well a default thread pool by uh, provided by the JDK, but um, else or instead of that, actually, we want to use the managed executor service provided by Java EE in order to make this an asynchronous JAXRS resource. And then, well, this will be handled by a thread that will be created by this executor service. Similarly, if we want to create a new instrument, then here we have a response return type in that uh, method. So we can also use the completion stage type to return this. And then, of course, um, our um, method body looks a little bit differently. Let's say we create um, a completable future as well. And this craft instrument is actually a void method. So we say run async. Please run this. And afterwards, um, um, then apply. Apl apply it is. and return this for the response no content. Basically, return this no content response. 
or exceptionally if actually an exception happens then what we do is that we return the status code for internal server error plus a header that um, describes what went wrong here and this is how our method here looks like same story we need to actually define the managed executor service in order to tell the completable future how to create these threads internally and then we applied asynchronous checks resources however that itself does not of course um, implement the the bulkhead pattern so what we do we actually instead of that use now this um, this dedicated um, um, executive service provided by porcupine so this is the functionality that is a cdi qualifier that we can do that we can use and then we define just well an executor service for example for instruments let's call this instruments read and another one for instruments write write executor and read executor and now we have different executors that we can actually define here and then implicitly we use different thread pools, uh, different thread pools that we can configure um, accordingly. So that actually makes sure that we use different pools for this different type of functionality. And then if, for example, the get instruments resource is heavily under load, that doesn't affect the create uh, instrument, the write um, method uh, functionality here, because that still uses their own pool that is totally independent. And now there is one bracket too much. And now towards back pressure. So that alone will um, already make our application more resilient, somewhat resilient um, in terms of that we applying multiple uh, bulkheads here. What was also very interesting is applying back pressure. The motivation behind that is that we want to meet our SLA, our service level agreement. That means we respond within a time frame, um, um, within a maximum response time. And we want to apply that back pressure to the client. So we want to let the client know that actually our, our service is under heavy load. And we can do so by, well, actually configuring how that thread pool will behave. because. That thread pool will have a queue afterwards for uh, will have a queue for new incoming um, requests, and then at some point, well, that queue will be not uh, will be not large enough, so there will be new incoming requests that we need to handle, and then, well, there in this article, if um, have a look at it, you will see that there is a formula to calculate basically the queue length based on the maximum latency that we want to allow in the system. Because if we basically allow and configure a bigger queue, then ultimately it will take longer to handle that request, sure. But the good, point, uh, the good side of that is our request will be handled. But if it's more important actually to meet the SLA, to not respond um, over that maximum response time, even if it would be a successful response, if we could successfully handle the request then actually what we want to take into account is how we configure this in regard to the queue length and also in regard regard to the behavior what happens if we actually have too many requests in the system and per default um, what the default behavior of the thread pool configuration does it simply discards um, the request which first of all is good so it doesn't damage the system but then our client doesn't know about it so actually be, uh, the better handling is to let the client know immediately and to reject it actually immediately. So not after the response time of let's say 200 milliseconds, but actually immediately because we already know based upon that calculation that we're not going to meet the SLA, that we're not going to be able to respond in time. So in regard to uh, Porcupine to this library, we can actually specify how these um, executor service are configured how they will react if our system is under load and in order to do so we can create a custom executor um, configurator class because there is an executor configurator bean definition here that's shipped with porcupine and we can 
use CDI specialization, we can use the add specializes annotation to override this and define our own well, behavior, for example, for specific pipelines. So you see that our, in our um, instrument resource, we injected this using a named uh, qualifier, instruments read, for example. And then what we can specify is that for a specific name, such as instruments read, if that equals our name, then we want to have a specific configuration. For example, an executor configuration um, builder where we can specify now, for example, the policy. And what we want to have is the abort policy. So it will be aborted immediately. And that means we will get an exception. Together with that, we might want to set that queue size. I will set it to four in my example. And then we build the configuration for this particular pipeline name. And for the default, um, if that doesn't match us, um, matches the name. So if we have a dedicated um, one that is differently, let's say I can also um, have another if for this name, of course, then let's say we want to have the same, what is important, abort policy, and for example, default uh, queue capacity based on your specific uh, requirement. But the abort policy, again, that's important to configure it that way if we want our system to respond and react in that way. And what then we need to take into account is that we will get this rejected ex um, execution exception. And that actually will be thrown once we try to um, apply the new and handle the new request. So therefore, we want to um, register a JAXRS um, execution handler for that specific exception. Because what we want to let the client know is that our service is currently unavailable. That will be HTTP status code 503. So our system will immediately respond with that status code um, if our system is not able to handle new requests. So this is how that is configured and how we set the queue sizes for the individual um, executor services. So let's build our project using Maven to a WAR file that includes our Porcupine library. And then let's Docker build this into the Docker image that we are going to run. Then let's run the example in our network that also contains our backend system that is actually being used. And then once that is up and running, we can use curl with local host with the locally mapped port 9080 and the instrument craft shop example resources is the JAXRS um, name instruments. So this will give us all the musical instruments that works that looks great so they are returned that's the read um, resource and now of course that works because our system is not on the heavy load it's doing nothing so let's put our system under load actually i will use ab apache bench to create in this case 20,000 uh, requests and 100 uh, concurrent um, transactions here concurrent uh, requests and now what we can see is that we will get the service unavailable immediately. So we immediately get the, this response if well, our service is under load and not able to accept new requests because it's busy we, with responding all of the requests of our benchmark. However, let's start this again. If we might want to create new instruments, so if we're posting to instruments using this JSON type, let's create a new guitar, then this is still possible. So the first time, um, actually, the back end responded slowly, but let's start the, the benchmark again. But our system immediately responds because this is a different um, pool. This is a different bulkhead, a different compartment in our system. However, as you saw before, the read resource might not work depending if our request got lucky and got into uh, the queue. Otherwise, our system is heavily under load. But still, at least our overall application stays intact and we'll be able to create new instruments. So that's the important part. If you'd like to try this out, you can have a look at the Porcupine library by Adam Bean. You can find this on GitHub. And also you can find the Instrument Craft Shop example 
um, here on GitHub with the Bulletproof Java E uh, branch and try this out, try to get familiar with this configuration of the executor service um, definitions. Thank you for watching.